Hello everyone, and welcome to the Center of Math Star Wars special in honor of the upcoming Episode 7. So I wanted to take a sort of a mathematical look at something that happens earlier on in the series. So here we have the planet Alderaan. That's some oceans and some lakes. Let's put in some happy little clouds. And as we all know, the planet Alderaan in the first movie gets destroyed by no moon but the Death Star. And that's the end of that. Uh, so what I wanted to look at is exactly how much energy would, you, would, would the Death Star need or would some other uh, prodigal super weapon user want, need to just completely destroy and mass scatter an entire planet. As it turns out, we can calculate this using mathematics and physics. So, let's start by saying that the planet Alderaan has radius, uh, capital R, and uh, density, delta, in some number of uh, kilograms per meter cubed. We'll put numbers to these later, but right now we, we, just, we can just use variables for the mathematical part of it. So, uh, because of conservation of energy, the order in which we mass scatter all around doesn't matter. So, uh, if we want to do it in a way that's symmetrical, what we could do is take off uh, shells of the planet, one, sh one shell at a time, where we let each shell have thickness dr, which uh, in this sort of limit case we're going to take to be infinitesimal because we, we're going to be used an integral, uh, and, each, and each shell will uh, be occurring at, the, at uh, the radius r. At the outside, of course, little r is going to equal big R, but as we, take, as we continue taking shells off, as we, as we get to the, uh, the inside of the planet, little r is going to be smaller, the big R eventually going down to zero. So, the mass of one of these shells is going to be equal to the density of Alderaan times uh, the thickness of the shell times the surface area of, of, that, of, of, the, of the sphere that remains of it. So this is going to be equal to 4 pi r squared dr. Now, um, Newtonian mechanics tells us that the uh, uh, potential energy of, the gravitational potential energy of something, a, uh, uh, of, of an object above an attractor, um, the, the, the potential gravitational energy of that object will be equal to negative uh, g m m over r, where g is the gravitational constant. Um, in this case, uh, what, we're, what we're looking at is the shell. So the potential energy of the shell of the planet will be this expression where little m is the mass of the shell and big M is the mass of the planet that remains. In order to blow that shell off to infinity, we need to add this much energy to that shell. So, the uh, the energy that will be needed to remove one of these shells is going to equal positive now g uh, big M little m over r. But here we have that little m is equal to four pi r squared dr. And big M is the mass of the, the sphere underneath the shell. That's, that's going to be four-thirds pi r cubed uh, delta. Oh, there's, there's a delta here, too. I forgot, since we need to consider the density. Uh, so big M is going to be four-thirds pi r cubed delta. So this is going to be equal to g times four-thirds four pi 
r to the 3 delta times 4 pi r squared dr delta. This is all over r. And so we, we get that this will be equal to uh, 16 thirds pi squared delta squared g times r to the fifth, r to the fourth rather, to the three, to the two, to the minus one, dr. So then, to find the energy we need to blow off all these shells and thus blow Alderaan into bits at infinity, we integrate this. So, and we're going to integrate from zero to big R since uh, we have to blow off shells uh, from big R all the way down to zero. So the total energy is going to be equal to the integral from zero to R of 16 over 16 thirds pi squared g delta squared r to the 4 dr. And so uh, this integral is going to uh, only affect the r to the 4 dr, which turns into r to the 5th of the 5. So this is going to be equal to 16 fifteenths uh, pi squared g delta squared r to the fifth. So here's our expression, but how much is that? In order to figure it out, we need to put uh, actual numbers to what g, delta, and r are. So Alderaan is probably about the size of Earth since there are humans and such living on it. So let's take the values that Earth has for Alderaan. So, we have, so the gravitational constant is constant across the universe. Uh, it, it was as it was in a galaxy a long time ago, far, far away. The same, as, uh, the same then it is a, as it is now. And that's equal to uh, 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11 uh, joule meters per kilogram squared. Uh, this can be possibly written in other units as well. And then uh, the uh, radius, uh, this, is, this is big R of course, since we integrated up to R. The radius of Earth is about 6,400 kilometers or 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters, and then the density of Earth is about 5,500 kilograms per meter squared. If we plug these into our formula for the total energy to destroy Aldron, we get the result that the total energy needed to destroy the Earth or destroy Aldron is about 2.3 times 10 to the 32 joules. This is a very large amount of energy. To put this in comparison, this is equal to uh, about one quadrillion times the uh, destructive power of the nuclear weapon used on Nagasaki. It's equal to around uh, a couple of billion times the combined nuclear arsenal of every, um, of every country on Earth. And it's even equal to 100,000 times uh, the energy of the meteor that killed the dinosaurs. So, needless to say, we're not going to be building our own Death Star anytime soon. That's probably, all, that's probably good, all things considered. If you want to see more cool mathematical discussions and resources from the Center of Math, you can either subscribe... And I will use my magical powers to create a box around this that lets you describe. Or you can visit our website at centerofmath.org. Where I will do likewise. And remember, 
May the force be with you.